hope we please all day long. Our friends say it's darkest before the sun rises. Well, we're pretty sure they're all wrong. I hope it stays dark forever. I hope the worst isn't over. And I hope you blink before I do. Yeah, I hope I never get sober. And I hope when you think of me years down the line, you can't find one good thing to say. And I hope that if I found the strength to walk out, you'd stay the hell out of my way. I am drowning. There is no sign of land. You're all coming down with me. As a hand in our love of a hand. And I hope you die. I hope we all. Thank you. This song involves less yelling and screaming, I gotta be honest with you. But I played it last night and I told a very long story about it and I'm just really fond of this one. Uh, it's, it, did I, okay, let me just be the teacher. Who, who was at the Herbs last night? Did I tell you guys at length who Ox Baker is? Uh, do you mind hearing the story again for those who missed it? So, I'm really conscious of that. If you, you should go get a drink if you mind. Right? So, but, uh, but I'm really conscious of that because if you go see a band twice and you hear the exact same patter, to me, you know, this arouses a murderous rage in me. And I'm not going back to prison. But yeah, but when I was a kid, I was really into pro wrestling, and uh, no, that's true. But pro wrestling was like a very, very cheap game in those days. There was no, like, there were not script writers working on the ideal tagline for the guy to have when he makes his entry with the big lighting rigs and, and the fire pots and everything. There was just a wrestling room. I was a boxing ring <laughs> they're using for wrestling, and in the Olympic Auditorium, and, and some lights. It's kind of about it. It was kind of the indie rock of sports. It was like, it, it, you know. And the people who showed up thought it was the greatest thing in the world, but everybody else didn't think so. <laughs> uh, and, and the way it worked was, in LA we had a very, very, very unimportant bunch of wrestlers who nobody ever heard of outside of Southern California and maybe a little bit in Arizona. But in every wrestling market, there comes a time when some guy swears if he loses a match, he's going to leave town, and you'll never see him again, right? And, uh, and what happens when a guy does this is it means he had family to visit someplace. <laughs> and he needed a month off, you know? Maybe he had something going on in his life. So he's in the New York market, and he says to a then young entrepreneur named Vince McMahon, hey, Vince, you know, I need, I, I, I gotta go to California, uh, see some people, can, can you set me up some dates out there? And Vince would say, yeah, oh yeah, no, there's an organization out there. And so suddenly this guy you've only seen in the magazines is being interviewed, and he seems to have some beef with our local wrestlers. But even as a kid, you go, well, you don't know any of our guys. Nobody out here has ever heard of you except me, because I make my mom buy me the wrestling magazines, you know? I mean. Otherwise, you're just some guy, and you're all mad at Chavo Guerrero, who never, never did a thing to you, right? But, but his anger was contagious, because it was senseless, because it seemed to originate in itself. It was a perfect emotional feedback loop, right? Ox Baker comes out and says, I'm going to defeat Chavo Guerrero, my hero, right? And, but I liked him because he, he just, he came out so filled with hatred. He was just going to do it. He never heard of us or our piddly little L.A. franchise. And he started talking. And what came out was just blind, incoherent, and I mean that in a real sense, rage. And the line that I'm always quoting that he said, because this was when I learned from my stepfather what the word inarticulate meant. Because in a, 
in a good moment between the two of us. I was watching Ox Baker and trying to figure out what the hell he was talking about. I'm like, so I thought I was lucky. He said, oh, that's so sad. And I said, why is it sad? He said, well, he's inarticulate. He can't, being interviewed is really not a thing for him, but he has to, <laughs> has to do it anyway. So, <laughs> so what Ox Baker said to we, the, the viewing audience of Los Angeles, was when I tell you that the blood is going to run from Chavo Guerrero's eyes, you better come down to ringside and bring your handkerchief so you can dip it in the blood. <laughs> My stage patter aspires to the condition of this great utterance. <laughs> so anyway, this song envisions Ox Baker having been kicked out of, you know, having been told we have no more use for you here in Florida, so you go find a gig someplace else. And, and Ox taking the whole thing kind of rather more seriously and thinking, you know, I'm actually, maybe I'm actually going to have to wrestle these people to prove my point to them. It's called Ox Baker Triumphant. I will rise from the swamp where they dumped my private plane I'll be clutching a life preserver In my teeth And I will find the highway And I will flag down a truck Worry lines on my forehead Blank stare underneath And when I come Back to town I'm gonna cast my burden down Little worse for wear Practically walking on air 